The National Park System manages over 400 incredible locations in the beautiful United States of America. Often we think of the 63 national parks proper, but there's also historical sites, monuments, lake shores, and national seashores. I've been to all 10 of the national seashores, and for this video, I'd like to give you a brief overview of each one and also present them in the order of which ones I've enjoyed the most simply based upon my own personal experience. Regardless of the ranking, all of them are quality locations. I believe this video is the first of its kind on YouTube, so please subscribe to the channel and let's get started. All right, on behalf of America's Parks, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Welcome to Fire Island National Seashore. And number 10 is Fire Island National Seashore, located on the southern shores of Long Island. Situated about two hours east of New York City, Fire Island protects 26 miles of a 32-mile barrier island. Part of the island can be reached by vehicle, yet the more primitive areas are accessed only by ferry, which depart from three mainland locations. For me, the highlight is the 168-foot-tall Fire Island Lighthouse that began operations back in 1858. There are some boardwalks and many hiking trails on the island. A unique location is the Sunken Forest, which contains 300-year-old holly trees, almost hidden from the dunes. On the island are some lifeguarded beaches. Beach camping is also available. And as with many of the national seashores, be prepared for mosquitoes. A fun nearby stop is Coney Island with a visit to the amusement park and the original Nathan's Hot Dogs. We are with the in-laws, and I give the honor to the Van Gennep sisters. Welcome to Assateague Island National Seashore. Number nine, Assateague Island. One third of the seashore is located in Virginia. The rest is found in Maryland. The area was originally scheduled for development until it was preserved as a national seashore in 1965. The park is mostly known for its feral horses, which are believed to have swum across from a shipwrecked Spanish galleon. The barrier island is rather narrow, only about a mile or so wide at its largest width, but contains 37 miles of beachfront property. Camping is available right on the beach. There are three short hiking trails in the dunes and on boardwalks through the salt marshes. The majority of the longer trails are located nearby Chincoteague National Wildlife Refuge. Visit Assateague Lighthouse. A nice excursion is a trip to neighboring Ocean City, Maryland. Enjoy the boardwalk, carnival rides, and good food. This is Florida. Welcome to Canaveral, National Seashore. And number eight is our newest national seashore, Canaveral, adopted in 1975. Access is available from the north or the south, but the roads do not connect in the middle. In 2018, we visited the southern section. It was during a tropical storm, but we enjoyed driving around and making a brief stop at the beach. At the end of 2022, I visited the northern section. Canaveral is the longest protected coastline in Florida and stretches 24 miles. The seashore contains 58,000 acres of barrier island, open lagoon, coastal hammock, pine flatwoods, and offshore waters. Two-thirds of the park is Mosquito Lagoon. Small boats can be rented at the visitor center. There are dolphins, manatees, and sea turtles. There's also a few hiking trails, some complete with boardwalks. The area is rich in Native American history, and the Cape Canaveral Space Program is located just to the south. A great day trip is a visit to the Kennedy Space Center. Perhaps you'll be in the area when a rocket launches. Number seven, Padre Island. Technically, I never made it far beyond the welcome sign where the road ends on my first visit in 2011. The majority of my time was spent on a two-day camping trip at Mustang Island State Park, the area just to the north of Padre Island. The video shown is from that location. 
North Padre Island in southeastern Texas is the longest undeveloped barrier island in the world. The National Seashore is 70 miles with the beautiful 65 and a half miles of Gulf Beach. Nearly all of it is accessible only by boat. Padre Island is not to be confused with South Padre Island, located just to the south, a favor for spring break vacationers. We are in Mississippi. We want to welcome you to 24 hours at Gulf Islands National Seashore. Number six, the Gulf Islands. The Gulf Islands are seven main barrier islands located in both Florida and Mississippi in the Gulf of Mexico. The Apache Indians once lived here, including Geronimo himself. The islands make up America's largest national seashore, stretching 160 miles from east to west. Five of the 42 forts our nation built are located on this national seashore. Some areas can be reached by automobile but the majority require a boat. In 2019, we visited Ship Island on a ferry. On the island, we enjoyed the beautiful white sand, warm water, and touring Fort Massachusetts. We also enjoyed sampling some of the local food choices in nearby Biloxi. So it was a full day today at Cumberland Island National Seashore. Number five is Cumberland Island. Cumberland Island can be reached only by boat. The public ferry departs from St. Mary's on the Georgia mainland. Cumberland Island is approximately 16 miles long and three miles at its widest point. Some visit the island for an extended hiking trip, but most only come over for the day. Due to its size, rental bikes are available. I chose to go with the narrated van tour, which made various stops as we drove the length of the island. Most notable were the Plum Orchard Mansion, the first African-American Baptist church where JFK and Carolyn Bissett were married in 1996, and the Dungeness Ruins. The island has a diverse wildlife population, history in the cotton trade, beautiful beaches, the history of the Carnegie family, feral horses, and over 50 miles of hiking trails. As we battle the effects of Tropical Storm Chris, I am with my wonderful daughter, Haley, and we want to welcome you to Cape Lookout National Seashore. And number four is Cape Lookout. Cape Lookout is made up of three islands on North Carolina's Outer Banks. The areas are accessible only by boat. In 2018, my daughter and I took a day trip departing from Harker's Island. As you could see, it was a challenging day weather-wise. While on the island, we enjoyed a narrated tour explaining the maritime history of two historic villages. We also climbed to the top of the 163 foot Cape Lookout Lighthouse. The area is also popular for the 100 plus wild horses that are found on Shackleford Banks, the southernmost barrier island. With undeveloped beaches, limited visitors, and over 250 species of birds, this area is indeed a special place. We find ourselves a little north of San Francisco, here on the Pacific Coast. Welcome to Point Reyes National Seashore. Number three is Point Reyes, located in Northern California. This is a popular getaway for those living in the Bay Area. Point Reyes is located on the San Andreas Fault and is the only national seashore on the Pacific Coast. The area is rich in maritime and ranching history. There are beautiful accessible beaches, Along the coast are dramatic cliffs offering breathtaking views. Inland are hilly terrains and grassy plains. For many, the primary destination is the Point Reyes Lighthouse, which opened in 1870. Elephant seals can be seen on the beach and gray whales in the ocean. The area boasts of 150 miles of hiking trails. We are excited to spend two days here at Cape Hatteras National Seashore. And number two is North Carolina's Cape Hatteras, composing a large portion of the famed Outer Banks. Within the 70 protected miles are three separate islands, Bodie and Hatteras Island, which can be reached by car, and then Ocracoke Island, which can be reached only by ferry. Climb to the top of the tallest lighthouse in the United States. The famous lighthouse often ranked by many as the most beautiful. There is also incredible lighthouses on the other two islands as well. The place is known for its surfing and surf fishing. 
It's also called the Graveyard of the Atlantic due to the numerous shipwrecks off its coast. An interesting local stop is Wright Brothers National Memorial, located just to the north in Kill Devil Hills, which commemorates the first successful, sustained, and powered airline flights. I have now visited OBX three times, and I seem to enjoy it more with each trip. Adopted in 1953, Cape Hatteras is our nation's oldest seashore. It's Christmas time. We got the whole family here at Cape Cod National Seashore. And at number one is Cape Cod National Seashore, located in Massachusetts, about 70 miles from Boston. This is the first national seashore I ever visited when my family would vacation here in the 70s. I spent a few days there on our honeymoon and have returned three times with my own family. There are 40 miles of beaches, several lighthouses, six different swimming areas, and 11 great hiking trails, which take you through the seagrass, marshes, and cranberry bogs. The seashore protects a mass of 44,000 acres. You can have a nice seafood dinner in the quaint town of Provincetown, learn about the history of the early pilgrims, visit Pilgrim's Monument, or our favorite, hike the mile-long breakwater, also known as Long Point Dyke, to Wood End Lighthouse and Long Point Lighthouse. It's also a very special place to enjoy the solitude as the sun sets at the tip of the point. Well, there you have it, 10 incredible national seashores listed in the order of my personal favorites. The full individual videos of each location are listed in the description below. Feel free to comment your favorites and please subscribe to the channel. Also check out the channel, America's Parks, for hundreds of national park videos. Thanks for watching and God bless you.